thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank Hello. you for joining us today. Stay right where you are. <coughs> Watch this special presentation. They say the hardest thing for a Jew to do is to embrace Jesus as his or her Messiah. That's understandable. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews have been persecuted, often by those claiming to be followers of Jesus. Since the first followers of Jesus were all Jews, the resentment has a long and tragic history. It stands to reason that if it is difficult for a Jew to embrace Jesus, it's even more difficult for a rabbi to do so. And that begs the question of how difficult it would be for the most revered rabbi in all of Israel to proclaim that the name of the Messiah is Yehoshua, the Hebrew version of Jesus. This is the story of Yitzhak Kaduri, the rabbi who found Messiah. Carl Gallups is a senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Santa Rosa County, Florida. He is named in the top 25 conservative talk radio hosts in the nation. He's the founder of the mega viral YouTube Christian Apologetics view news and ministry channel called P.P. Simmons with tens of millions of viewers and tens of thousands of subscribers. And we have them today. Good to have you. It is my honor to be here. Herman, Sharon, God bless <laughs> you. Thank God you. God bless you. This guy has done it all <laughs> and is still doing it. Yeah, well, I, I mean. The Lord has a sense of humor. That's all I can say. <laughs> you played sports? I did. Enjoy it? Very much so, yes. Do you have any aches and pains that are a result of all of the hits? Not any that I admit or talk about. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm going down fighting. This, I, I, I'm telling you, you're going to have the opportunity if you go to the website because you can get a DVD and that book that you see on the screen right there, you can get a copy of that uh, after you give to the ministry $10,000. Just <laughs> kidding. Just just joking. <laughs> Got your attention though, didn't it? But the, a great book, by the way. Thank and you. and Thank you. the DVD, I watched, and I've seen it on national TV. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that George Escobar, who you know, the the producer, just I, I was blown away when I saw it. I mean, I, of oh. course, I was there for all the filming, but I couldn't yeah. imagine when I saw it how he was going to piece all that together. But oh my gosh, it's it's powerful. Now. How did you get involved with this? Yeah, well, thank you for asking me that. And we'll tell the story in a moment of, of the rabbi and oh, everything, but, but when that story broke, basically in 2007 is when it broke big, and that's when I, my attention was drawn to it with the P.P. Simmons News and Ministry Network. And I, um, I, I produced a little six minute documentary video on this story put it on the internet, it went viral, it went crazy. And I began following it down through the years because the whole story was connected to the death of a world leader and that world, world leader has just died. So, yeah. But what happened then prior to this book, last year I had written another book that became a bestseller with WND Books and so my publishers called me, uh, the president of the company called me and said back in January of 2013, he said, you know, he said, this story is still unfolding because this world leader is still alive, still alive and, and, and you know, the, the, the prophecy was the Messiah would come after he died and uh, the rabbi's dead and the note's been out there and all of this amazing stuff is unfolding and no one's written about this. The media pretty much covered this up and you'll see why in a moment when I tell the story. But he said, no one's written about it. He said, you write the book. If we like the manuscript, we'll commit the resources to make a documentary uh, film out of it. So I wrote the book. Okay, and they tell did me, it. tell me. I can't imagine what that would feel like. Somebody say, write yeah. the book. I know. What, what did that do to you personally when he's saying that? 
Uh, well, number one, I was blown away and honored that he would ask me because they have a bevy of authors they could have asked. Sure. And so I was, I, I was honored and I give all glory to the Lord for that. But then after that, I knew I had my work cut out because this book. Because it had to be right. It had to be right. And, and as you've read it, it's not preachy, <sighs> it's objective, it's journalistic, it's heavily resourced and documented. Yes. I knew it would be a yeah. ton of work. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted you it have to the, be, sor the sources in the back, which yes, yeah, yes. I, I love. And, and I wanted it to be just right because I, I knew that some would be turned off by the story as it in the beginning until they read through and I wanted them to read all the way through yeah. uh, because it's so shocking it's so controversial yeah. uh, but it's so powerful and it's still unfolding you, before us. You probably had a mom and dad right? Yes I did okay. I had a mom and dad. <laughs> Good. Yes. Yes. Tell me about them. Yeah great folks they're they're still living and healthy and I praise God for that. They're in their early 80s. What'd you uh, do? Wonderful folks. He was a professor at the excuse me, at Florida State University in the School of Business. He was a professor of accounting, finance, business wow. administration, and auditing. Wow. And, ma and mama? Mom. Best cook in the world? Yeah, best cook in the world. <laughs> Housewife, raised four of us children and did a wonderful job and uh, raised us in church and good folks. And you, you met your wife? Met my, my wife and I met when we were 10 years old and became friends. We were childhood friends. I mean, did you did you look at her at that time and go, she is pretty? Well, yes, I did do that. I thought you were going to ask if I looked at her and said, she'll be my wife no, one day. No, I didn't. no, I'm not that you know how You know how uh, kids 10, 11, 12 yeah. years old kind of run in little groups in school yeah. and you make friends mm -hmm. and have a little group? Well, she was in that group. I was in that group, yeah. however you want to say it. And so, yes, I thought she was gorgeous, but she was a very good friend. But when we were 15, 16, 17, we looked at each other with different eyes and, and <laughs> said, you know what? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's wow. the one. And uh, so we began dating and uh, we married right out of high school, had our son. We've got one, one son who's now 37 uh, and a grandson that's 15. Uh, but we had him four years after we were married, but we married right out of high school, married at, at 18. And we've been together ever since, 40 years. What, what year were you married? Uh, 73. You, you think you're going to trick me. I know what you think. You're right here on live television, you think you're going to get me in trouble with my wife. See, just because, you've been, fail you. just because you've been in trouble with your wife yeah, doesn't mean right. you have to set me I up. Gotta, I, I, want, I want to share in my... September in, the 7th, yeah. 1973. Wow, good for you. Well, let's move into uh, the old rabbi and his visions. Yeah, wow. This, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, if, if you're... If you're thinking about going someplace, and I know there's appointments and so forth, yeah, and you're starting this and say, I wish I wish I could watch this, TiVo it. <laughs> That's okay? right. I'm telling you, uh, and, and this will be amazing to you. You just saw the intro with the video, but this will absolutely amaze you. Yeah. Begin, because the book is well written, and I hope you get a copy. I Thank hope you, you would get a DVD, because then you can have people in your home and yeah. say, you won't believe what I'm about to show you. Yeah. Go. In, in fact, churches are showing this all over the nation, the movie. And I, I advise people, if people say, well, I'm not much of a reader, get the movie. It's yeah. an hour long. Absolutely. It tells the story, yeah. and then that'll draw you into the book, because there's so much more in I'm the book. telling you, you will not be bored. No. When it starts, you will go. Right. I know. you got to be kidding me. I know. Yeah. It, it is amazing. Tell the story. Yeah, let me tell the story. It's uh, quite complex, but I'll, I'll get it down into just a couple of minutes. The bottom line is this. In 2006 of January, uh, Rabbi Kaduri died at the age of 108 years old. His name is Yitzhak Kaduri. He saw all the world wars. Yeah, that's the thing. He was in Israel before it was even Israel. Yeah. And, and he saw the rebirth of Israel. He went through all the prime ministers up to Ariel Sharon when yeah. he yeah. died. Um, he, he, went, uh, he saw World War I, World War II, the rise yeah. of the Muslim Brotherhood, Hitler, the, the, the Holocaust, the whole thing. But when he died, Herman and Sharon, in 2006, 300,000 people came to his funeral. They had to close the streets of Jerusalem down for two days. The, the president of Israel gave the eulogy. That's how powerful well, he this, loved and well, admired this guy his was. His prophecies, people would check them out and they actually happened. Well, many of them did. Yes. And, and he was, almost everything this man uttered was carried in mainstream Israeli news for, for years, for decades. Okay, so why was he so loved? Well, because he had been there so long he was, he was kind of the mother 
ter Teresa of, yeah. okay. of, of, of Jews, if you will. He was yeah. just a very humble, meek fellow. He prayed with people. He, he passed blessings on to people. He was literally like the Pope. Well, well to, to, to the Jews. Yes. I, yeah. I, I, in fact, yes. I tell people he's like the Billy Graham of Jews uh, yeah. in Israel. Yeah. I yes. mean, he was mm -hmm. just the most re yeah. uh, admired and revered person. But, but watch this. Here's, here's this amazing story. So he dies. 300,000 people come to his funeral. So this guy is not just some obscure little rabbi tucked away in the bowels of Jerusalem. This guy's a, really a world figure among Jews. Yeah. But here's what's so shocking. Prior to his death, just weeks prior to his death, he uttered two shocking things. Shocking thing number one, he said, I have, and he said this in a synagogue service, he said it to his followers, uh, he said it to groups of people, so it's, it's documented. But he said, I've had a vision of Messiah. Messiah has come to me. I, I know who he is. I have spoken to him. I know his name. And I'm going to leave the name of the real Messiah in a note to be opened one year after I'm dead. Now, when he said this, he was alive, of course, and well. No one knew sure. he had any health problems. So that was shocking thing number one. Shocking thing number two, he tied it, and this is what brings us right into today's life. He tied it to the life and death of Ariel Sharon. Oh, this, this, this is, stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Shocking thing number two, he said, was, now that I know the Messiah and I know his name, it has also been revealed to me that Messiah will not come before Ariel Sharon dies. Now, now, we're on the other side of Ariel Sharon's death, but remember this. This is what's so startling about this. When he said those things in the fall of 2005, first of all, Ariel Sharon had just been involved in the Gaza Land for Peace giveaway deal. So he was becoming a, quite a controversial fellow. And he was, he, was, he was kind of nudging up to the Palestinians. Well, he was. And uh, almost uh, to the point of whatever they want, we know if we give it to them, we'll, we'll have peace. That's, that's what mean, he I mean, thought. I mean, I mean, you'd go, wait a minute. I know. And, 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 and you give a little background upon Ariel Sharon and how he was raised. Right, I and do I mean, in, in my that's, book. That's completely opposite contrary opposite mm -hmm. to of the what way he, he was, was doing raised. yes go ahead yes. well and so what happened was is that in the fall of 2005 rabbi kaduri yitzhak kaduri uttered these two shocking things but watch within weeks a double handful of weeks 10 to 12 weeks after saying those two things january the 4th 2006 Ariel Sharon suffers a massive stroke and goes into a coma. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that coma would last eight years and seven days. But, of course, at the time it happened, people were hoping, well, he'll recover. You know, the stroke mm -hmm. will recover. He'll come out of the coma. Some of the coma was at first induced. First thing, when I heard it, I thought, please don't put him on life support. Right. And, and, all, and, and it was like, but there was a reason why they wanted to keep him alive. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. But watch. So, January the 4th, 2006, he goes into a coma. January 28th, 2006, just a few weeks later, Rabbi Kaduri enters the hospital, has pneumonia, and dies. So they both die, excuse me, because Sharon didn't. They no, both, yeah. Sharon goes into a coma, and Yitzhak Kaduri dies in the same month of the same year within just a few weeks of him uttering these two shocking things. Now watch, the story continues to unfold. Yitzhak Kaduri died on a Sabbath, keep that in mind. He died on a Sabbath, on a Saturday. Keep that in mind, that's important. One year later, the note was opened. Now, because remember, when he said this, now he had the world's attention, at least the Jewish world and the Christian world that was paying attention to the story, because he said, I, I know the Messiah. I know his name. Well, so everybody waited for a year. The note was opened. It was posted on his website, Kaduri.net, by his mammoth organization. Somebody in his organization put it there. The note was there for, I don't know, a few weeks until it was finally decoded, and that's where the story gets really exciting because it was written in kind of a coded format. But, but Israel Today, right out of Jerusalem, multi-language news source, ran a cover story on the note, uh, News First Class, now it's called News One, Hebrew-only news media out of Jerusalem, Israel. They ran a story on it. So all of this is documented. This is not some tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy thing. This is documented. The note was there. And when the note was finally decoded, the name that he left was in Hebrew, the, because this man spoke nothing but Hebrew, Yehoshua, which is the long form version of Yeshua, which we would say in English, the Messiah's name is Jesus. That rocked the Orthodox Jewish world. And the news media shut it down, mainstream media shut it down, the Jewish news media shut it down because that went against everything that they believed and had ever taught. The name of Jesus is pretty much anathema to the Orthodox right. Jews. And here is their Billy Graham of Orthodox Jews declaring 
the real Messiah is Jesus. That would be tantamount to Billy Graham passing and leaving a note, and you open it, it says, well, the name of Messiah is Mohammed. Yes, uh -huh. yes. That would be what it would be like to the Christian world. Good example. So there it is. Now watch. So all of that happened, and now, now when that happened, and I, I got involved in the story way back then, I made the video, put it on the internet, I told you that. Now we come up. January the 1st, 2013, excuse me, in January 2013, Fox News is reporting that Ariel Sharon's brainwaves are starting to kind of come around, and some people were speculating he might wake up. Now that would have been seven years yeah. after he went into the coma. Mm -hmm. January the 1st, 2014, I wake up to the international news on the first day of the new year. International news on January 1st, Ariel Sharon is going to pass away in a few days. I watched it because I had written the book and the movie's made. I, I know the story. I know the prophecies. No one's talking about the prophecies, though. Mainstream media won't touch it. They're talking about Ariel Sharon and his life and politics and, and all that, but they will not touch this story, which is a factual story mm -hmm. that Ariel Sharon's life is tied to the coming of Messiah in a prophecy by the most famous rabbi in Israel's modern history, and nobody will touch it. Well, so I watch. January the 11th rolls around, and he passes. Guess what day it was on? The Sabbath. That's why I said, remember, Kaduri dies on a Sabbath. Ariel Sharon dies on a Sabbath, eight years and seven days apart. On Monday is his funeral. Mainstream media carries the story. During his funeral, there's an earthquake in Israel. During his funeral. So prophecy watchers all over the world really now um, have their eyebrows raised and they're paying a little attention to this story. I, am I, I think the key word you just said, a little attention. A, a little, but more now because of the book and the movie. Yeah. Pe people now know the story. But, but I, I, want, I want your audience to know, and I want you guys to know, I am not a date setter. I, I, I don't claim the sky is falling, but, but I've been a preacher of the Word and a student of the Word for, you know, decades, 30 years I've been preaching and teaching it all over the world. Um, I know we're living in extremely prophetic times. Could it be that God would pick the most venerated rabbi in modern Israel's history to tell the Jews one more time before the Lord returns that Jesus is Messiah? Could that be? Of course it could be. You know, is that what happened? Well, that's between Kaduri and the Lord. I, I don't know the man's mind and heart. I know he said it did. I know he left a note. I know he destroyed his whole Jewish legacy by leaving the note. So it was that valuable to him, apparently. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that it was tied to the death of Ariel Sharon. I, I, you know, Kaduri didn't set a date. My book doesn't, and I'm not. But Kaduri said, when Sharon dies, Messiah's coming. Well, and the implication was, relatively soon thereafter. What, what amazes me, when this all began, he had a huge meeting and he sat there for 45 minutes, this rabbi did. that you're talking about, in a trance. That's what the media reported, yes. And then he said, I have met the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, as a rabbi, they're going, we know that, you know, obviously you, you are a prophet. Right not knowing that the outcome would eventually be death, a year later yes would be that no well and what listen what's fascinating and, and you've seen the movie so you know this but what's really fascinating is some of the detractors of this story people within his organization well the notes are fakes it's a hoax and we can talk about what was in the note but the bottom line is this look he said he was going to leave a note many people heard it it was kept in safekeeping it was on his website. Somebody in the organization put it there. The only time they took it down was when they saw what the note said. Uh, and uh, we have on video Rabbi Kaduri's son, David Kaduri, who's in his 80s because his dad was 108. Yeah. So his son, who's now the heir apparent to the organization, we have him on video in this movie saying, my father never even spoke about Messiah. Well, now, that's a little nefarious because, number one, it was his job to talk about yeah. Messiah. Number two, the Israeli media for years prior to that, we have reports right out of the Israeli media where he did talk about well, Messiah. Well, he has to do that to protect his position well, now. Well, I, th I think so, and I understand that. Sure. I'm, not, I'm not disparaging yeah. David yeah. Kaduri or his organization. Yeah. I, I think you're right. Yeah. But, but, so, but he said that. But in the movie, we actually have students from Kaduri's rabbinical training school in Hebrew. That's called a yeshiva, as you know. Uh, from his yeshiva, 
And these guys are not 20 year old kids. They're 40, 50, 60 year old men saying, oh, for years prior to this death note, he was teaching on a more private basis because, because of, I'm, I'm sure, because of the, uh, the persecution they would all take. He was teaching in his yeshiva that Messiah was Yeshua. And we have on video and in the book transcribed where some of these students said, I gave my life to Jesus Christ as Lord because of the teachings of Rabbi Kaduri. Goodness. Now this was before his death note. Goodness gracious. And we have another student on video of Kaduri saying, look, there are a lot of Jews in Israel who believe that Yeshua is Lord, but they're terrified to say so publicly because of the persecution. That goes back to the first century, I, I think of the times during the Apostle Paul and the early Christians, all persecuted primarily by the Orthodox Jews. So, why, so I think we're in, in those prophetic days. Why is Jesus, let me put it this way, why are they so afraid that Jesus could be the Messiah? In, 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 I'm talking about in Israel proper yeah. Yeah. and even Jews that are in America. Why is that such a taboo? Yeah. Well, let me speak to that in a practical, humanistic way, but of course you both know there's a spiritual umbrella over the whole sure. thing. Sure. We know from sure. the beginning of time yeah. when God prophesied in the, book, yeah. in the book of Genesis to Adam and Eve, yeah. the woman's yeah. seed will crush the yeah. head of the serpent. So Satan has been trashing Jesus ever since and just trying to destroy his people. That's the spiritual umbrella, but the practical humanistic reasoning is this. Herman and Sharon, as you both know, great students of the Word, Jesus, the person of Jesus, as He suffered upon Calvary's cross and as He rose from the dead three days later, He was rejected by the Jews in that time, His own people. He came unto His own and His own received Him not. Well, as the Old Testament says, God says, Moses said about the Jewish people, these people are obstinate. They're stubborn. They will not receive what I'm doing for them. So when Jesus was rejected, we've had 2,000 years of obstinance. In fact, in this movie, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who was raised Orthodox Jew, oh, yeah. he is in this movie and he explains this Jewish mindset that, listen, you can be a Jew and be an atheist and that's okay. You can be a Jew and dabble in Hinduism and that's okay. If you're a Jew and you say you believe Jesus is Messiah, the one they rejected 2,000 years ago, you're castigated. You're persecuted. That's anathema. And so there is a deep-seated hatred for all things Christian in Orthodox Judaism. Now listen, I'm not saying all Orthodox Jews are evil, nothing. I'm a great defender of Orthodox Judaism and the right for Israel to exist to, to, my, to my own detriment. Don't mess with Israel. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I preach that, I teach that yeah. to my detriment. Uh, so this is not an anti-Jewish movie or book oh, at no. all. Oh no, no. This uh, is, this I'm is, just telling the this story. This is positive. Yes, it's very positive. But, but I'm just, I'm answering your question, number one, but also I just tell the story that's already out there. The media kind of covered it up, but the resources are there. So I'm telling it and we're opening the story back up. But that's, that's why, because there was such a rejection 2,000 years ago and that rejection still continues. Chapter 11, you talk about Ariel Sharon, the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. How did that mm -hmm. happen? Well, I, I, I deal with a lot of uh, speculation. Now, remember when I wrote the book, Ariel Sharon was still alive sure. and in a coma. But there was a lot of speculation on the internet, but posted in major forums where a lot of people were participating among some people that Ariel Sharon might prove to be the Antichrist in that he would, listen, he was adored by Israelis for so long. He was the face of modern Israel, politics and militarily. Yes, yes. He was called in the Israeli media. First of all, his name, Ariel, means Lion of God. Well, that's a messianic term. Sure. And we're okay. If a mama wants to name her Hebrew son Ariel, that's fine. But we know Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lion of God. And then, of course, the Israeli media called him King of Israel. They called him the Savior of Israel. Yeah. I mean, they literally use messianic terminology. So, when people, you know, that were studying end times and prophecy, they knew about all of this. They're watching him in a coma, this venerated political military leader who's got messianic terms applied to him. What if he had awakened from a seven-year coma, for example, back in 2013 when Fox News was reporting that that might happen? What if he had awakened and said, in all of these years I've been in a coma, I have been in the presence of God and He's told me that that I'm to rule the world now or something. You know, people were saying, what if something like that happened? Well, not people only that, would flock to him. They're listening to him when he's yes. talking about giving away land. That's right. 
But of course, that scenario didn't unfold. And I don't say in my book that he's going to be the Antichrist. Yeah. Again, this is written very objectively. But I was dealing with, in my book, all of the stories and theories that yeah. were out there. And you didn't know what was going to come along? Didn't know what no. was going to happen. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Kaduri mm -hmm. has a quote in the book. He will save us from Islam and Christianity. Yes. Speaking of when Messiah comes. Well, listen. Now, now that's interesting. It is. He will save us from Islam yes. and Christianity. Yes. Now, let me, let me, let me I, again, I'm not Kaduri's publicity agent. I'm not here to proclaim that he is a 100% prophet and yeah. everything he says is perfect. But I first want your listeners to, to, and, and viewers to know this. Um, I do a lot of radio, I'm sorry, viewers, <laughs> your viewers to know yeah. this. Um, Kaduri was thoroughly Jewish. And you got to remember, Jews hate yeah. Christians. When they speak of Christianity, when I was in Israel, I spoke to my tour guide who was born in Israel, and I, and I told him I'm a Christian. I was thinking he was going to say, oh, we love you guys. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. When they speak, when you speak of Christianity, when Jews speak of Christianity, they're thinking of persecution for yeah. thousands of years, of death, of, yeah. of, of destruction, of, you know, r land being taken from them, people being killed. I mean, Hitler did all of his stuff in the name of Christianity. But we've been there, too, and if they want a really big tip from the yes. group, they will pray with you and accept Christ. Oh, I know, yeah. I know, yeah. I know. I hear you. <laughs> but, but also, when I started explaining to him about Bible-believing evangelical mm -hmm. Christianity that loves Israel and loves yeah. the Jews, that their countenance yeah. changed. But the bottom line is that um, uh, this this understanding of Christianity. So when he said he will save us from Islam, well. You and I know that's that's a true statement. When Messiah comes, yes. when Yeshua comes, uh, that's true. Now, I I kind of look at this through the Jewish eyes when he said that. Again, not trying to excuse him, but Christianity. Listen, I don't mind being saved from religious Christianity myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm ready for Jesus to yeah, come to yeah, rule and reign. Take over. There's so much done in the name of Christianity yeah, yeah. that's pure evil yeah. all over the world. Exactly. So. In that sense, he was absolutely right. Yeah. He will save us from Christianity. Religious Christianity. Religious Christianity. Yeah. And then in Kaduri's Jewish mind, he was thinking when he comes, he'll save us from this, from this monstrous religious system called Christianity that has persecuted yeah. us. Yeah. Now we know as born again spirit filled believers that, that Christianity yeah. is just being Amen. a born again spirit filled believer. Share Christ, we have one minute left. One minute in With the show. Someone left. watching. I would be glad to. Listen, we're living in extremely prophetic times, regardless of this story. Pretend like this story didn't even exist. Israel's back in the land. The nations are aligning themselves. The gospel's going to the world. We live in prophetic times. It's time to do what Romans 10 9 says Confess with your mouth that Jesus yes, is Lord. Believe yes. in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now's the time to turn your life to Christ if you have not done so already. Thank you. Put your name in that whosoever. Mm -hmm. That's you. Today's program was for you. Change your direction. That's what conversion is. You're going in one direction and you just turn around. Trust Him today. He wants to come in. God bless you for your decision. Write to us. Bye-bye. Good job. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.